All right, Zion Wayside, welcome back to another Wednesday Night Devotion. Pastor Kyle here with you today, uh, and pretty excited for tonight's uh, devotion uh, as we look at Numbers chapter 22, one of my favorite stories here in the Bible, one of my favorite true stories in the Bible. And I'm guessing, maybe, just maybe, this will be the first time some of you hear uh, this portion of Scripture. Uh, might not be what you expect here in the Old Testament. So I'm excited to share this with you uh, this evening. Also, it's an exciting week here at Zion Wayside as we, this Sunday, will have our first of three consecutive outdoor worship services that right on our campus in our parking lot. Uh, we heard all the positive feedback that we got from Easter and are so excited to get back uh, to doing our drive-in services. Uh, 7.45 and 9.30 this Sunday morning, uh, again, in our parking lot at Zion Lutheran Church of Wayside. A couple things before we do that, though. Uh, again, want to remind you to take care of everything that you need to take care of before you arrive for service that morning, because our doors will be closed. They will be closed because we will be staying in our cars. We will not be getting out of our cars. We will do uh, everything that we can to maintain our social distancing uh, and keeping everyone safe uh, while still worshiping together. I also want to remind everyone that I know this is really difficult and, and we might have the idea to go to uh, a relative's house or to a neighbor's house or to a friend's house and pick them up and bring them with you in your car. We got to keep it to our households and our cars, okay? Uh, part of loving our neighbors as ourselves is following the social distancing guidelines, and we will do that. So your car will be your immediate family, and your car doors will stay closed, and we will stay in our cars and follow uh, those social distancing guidelines that have been given to us. Another part of our social distancing guidelines uh, is wearing a mask, uh, where if you're going to the store or if you're going to get gas, wherever you might be going, uh, highly, highly, highly suggested that we wear a mask. If you do not have a mask, we have uh, some members who are incredibly generous and gracious and said that they have made some extra masks. And so we will be giving away masks uh, for those who may be in need of them. So we will have a place set up on Sunday uh, in order for us to safely uh, and in a sanitary way, distribute those masks. So again, stay in your cars. Don't, don't run to the table where they're set up. We will have a way to um, safely distribute those masks for you right there on Sunday morning. So yes, this Sunday, next Sunday, following Sunday, three Sundays in a row, drive-in service, share the news, uh, 7.45 and 9.30, uh, come in your cars. We'll do the same way that we did it for Easter. Uh, enter in one side of the parking lot and exit through the other. Uh, hope to see you all there. So as you can see, we are jumping into Numbers chapter 22. And again, I think this might be a text that some of you uh, aren't too familiar with, so I'm excited about that. Uh, we have the story of Balaam. And so I just want to start getting some context, uh, context being what is going on here in the book of Numbers, what's happening with the people of Israel uh, here in, in this section of scripture, Numbers 22. And verse 1 gives us that. Then the people of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan at Jericho. So we are at the point of the story where uh, Moses has led the people of Israel out of Egypt. They are wandering in the plains of Moab. They have crossed the Jordan. And now they have conquered various nations, various tribes, and people are starting to take notice of that. And so Balak is going to summon a man named Balaam to go set a curse on the people of Israel, which doesn't sound like a very good thing. So what is going to happen? Well, in this story, we're going to see God work in ways that we might not always expect. And we're going to see a donkey, yes, a donkey, uh, being the way which God works for the benefit of his people. Think about a donkey. When I think of a donkey, I kind of think of a donkey as maybe the comedian of the barnyard crowd, right? The jokester, 
of the barnyard crowd. We don't take donkeys very seriously. Uh, we laugh at them. We laugh at the way that they sound. And, and you can see this in the way that we portray donkeys in stories and in Hollywood. Take a look at this. You guys recognize who this is? This, of course, is Eeyore. Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh and the Winnie the Pooh gang. Is Eeyore uh, a, a adventurous donkey, one who is always looking forward to the next adventure that he has with his friends? Is he the, the wise companion, the one that they always run to and say, hey, Eeyore, what do, what do we do in this situation? No. No. I mean, just think about his name. Eeyore. I mean, <laughs> that's that that kind of tells you all you need to know about the character Eeyore. He's slow, lethargic, boring, just wants to stay home, just wants to stay safe, doesn't want to do anything exciting. Eeyore is kind of that donkey that, that we would expect him to be. How about this? Donkey from Shrek. Doesn't he doesn't even get a fun name? He's just Donkey, I think. He's just Donkey from Shrek. Look at this one. That's a Halloween mask. Yikes. Wouldn't want to be Donkey from Shrek for Halloween. Anyway, uh, is, is Donkey Shrek's um, beloved companion who uh, Shrek leans on in time of need, who he goes to for advice, who he can trust um, and, and would just be completely lost if he didn't have Donkey by his side? No. No, in fact, it seems like Shrek is urging him to go away and, and at some points even despises Donkey and shoos him away because he's just this annoying little sidekick, right? That's, the, that's what we think of donkeys. Donkeys, we don't take them seriously. And yet a donkey is the main uh, character here in Numbers 22 here with the story of Balaam. So let's just, let's just read it and, and see what happens here in Numbers chapter 22. What's going on here? But God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. Remember, Balaam is going to place a curse on the people of Israel as they continue to march. And, and, and the kings within Jericho, the neighboring kings, see them and they're scared. So they're, they're sending someone out to place a curse on Israel. We continue. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. Yikes, that's scary. That is not an image that you want to see. And the donkey turned aside out of the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her into the road. So what's going on is that Balaam has been sent to place a curse on the people of Israel. And God has sent the angel of the Lord in his path, wielding a sword. Again, scary, scary image. And who sees it? Not Balaam, not his servants, the donkey. The donkey is the only one who sees the angel of the Lord standing there, ready to strike down whoever comes before him. So what does the donkey do? Strays from his path to protect that precious cargo that he has on his back. Of course, that being his master, that's, that's Balaam. But Balaam, being totally blind to the situation, gets angry and corrects his donkey by striking the donkey to get back on the path. He's completely oblivious to the angel of the Lord standing before him. But there's more. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed against the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. Okay, so a second time, the angel of the Lord comes before the donkey and Balaam. And again, Balaam doesn't see the angel of the Lord, but the donkey does. However, it's a little more narrow here. So as the donkey evades the angel of the Lord, Balaam gets his foot pinched. Now he's starting to get a little embarrassed and he's lost control of his animal. 
And again, he strikes the donkey to correct the animal. He's getting a little frustrated, a little annoyed with his donkey. He doesn't even know that his donkey is protecting him. Let's keep going. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. So, now there's nowhere to go. Now there is no way to avoid the angel of the Lord. The donkey knows this. The donkey is doing its best to protect Balaam. Man, he is mad. He, again, can't see the angel of the Lord. He's embarrassed now because his donkey is just completely stopped and lied down. He doesn't know what's going on. And so he takes out his anger on the donkey. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. Okay? So the Lord opens the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, this is the donkey speaking, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? Remember when I said it might be a story that you might not expect? Did you expect God to open the mouth of the donkey and and speak to someone? It happened. It happened. Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand, for then I would kill you. And the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And he simply said, no. So those three times the donkey was in the right. The donkey was protecting Balaam, who now we know has been with him for quite a while, right? And the donkey was just protecting him. The thing that stands out to me at at, at, as where we are now, uh, God opens the mouth of the donkey and Balaam just talks to the donkey, <laughs> right? He just talks to the donkey as if, that, as if he's done it before, as if he's heard a donkey speak to him before. Um, but he doesn't speak very kind words, right? He says, I, I wish I had a sword instead of the staff. I would have struck you down. Um, but the donkey was just trying to protect Balaam. And we're going to figure that out right now. Verse 31. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you because, you, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let her live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now, therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went on with the princes of Balak. So what does this have to do with us and our situation today? Well, first of all, I think we can just recognize the fact that this is a really cool story, uh, a true story, a way in which God worked to protect his people and protect uh, this man of Balaam. Uh, He used a donkey, the most unlikely of sources, to provide uh, smart decision-making right? He opened the eyes of the donkey to see the angel of the Lord and to, to see the present danger before him and, and to protect that precious cargo. He uses a, a unique and, and really um, unforeseen way to change the path of Balaam. I think our paths have changed in a unique way, given the current situation that we're in. This is not a good situation that we're in. There's there's a lot of hurt that's come as a result of this, a lot of fear, a lot of worry, a lot of change. 
But you know what? Maybe, maybe some of that change is good. Maybe there are some good things that have come about as a result of this pandemic, ways in which our lives um, have, have taken a different turn, an unexpected turn, to, to bring in some, some good. One of those ways that I've uh, heard about from quite a few people is uh, online church is booming. I hear so many different people say that they have a different service to watch probably every day of the week. Maybe they first watch uh, our service because they're a member there and and that's what you do. Uh, And that's great. Uh, Maybe you're someone who's not a member here and you're just watching it because a friend shared it. That's great too. Welcome. So great to have you. Um, maybe you watch a pastor that you once had and he left to serve a different congregation and you want to see what he's talking about. Great. Awesome. Maybe you follow one of our LCMS um, pages like uh, the Lutheran Hour or one of those other ministries that, that provides daily devotions or daily thoughts or videos, whatever it may be. Awesome. Love it. That's more and more time spent in God's word. Maybe that's a change that wouldn't have happened if you were uh, still entrenched in those 14-hour days that we were getting used to, right? Um, online church has, has become a, a really, really awesome thing. One other way I think our paths have changed and, and something good that has come about it is discipline. Discipline, right? Uh our trait of discipline has had to grow out of necessity. We are following social distancing guidelines because that's loving your neighbor. That's what Jesus called us to do. That's, that's caring for not only yourself, but certainly caring for yourself, but also caring for others in your family and others uh, who may be out and about as well. But I also wanted to focus on discipline and the fact that we're currently fasting. Um, a lot of pastors right now are thinking about communion and the Lord's Supper and how to celebrate that. And we're no different. Pastor Welter and I, along with our elders and, and other members of, of Zion, are talking about communion and how we might celebrate that again. Um, uh, but right now, we're, we're in a fast. We're fasting. And that's okay. That's good. That creates discipline within us. Yes, I yearn to commune just as much as you do. Uh, I look forward to the day where we can gather together as church and commune and participate in that sacrament again. But right now we're fasting, and that's, that's okay. That's good. We're still hearing the word, right? That's why this first one's so important. We're still hearing those words uh, that God has spoken to us, those words of love, those words of grace, those words of forgiveness. But we're fasting and, and creating that discipline within us from the Lord's Supper uh, and, 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 and even more so focusing on, on what that gift is and those words that God has spoken to us through them. Uh, that's, that's okay. That's a good thing. Uh, one other thing that's, that are, that, uh, one other way that our paths have changed a little bit is uh, something that we have been pushing for and have been talking about for kind of my entire time here at Zion um, is parent involvement with either confirmation or just general child growth and maturity, right? Uh, We have talked about several ways in which we wanted to get parents more involved with the confirmation program into the future, and we're going to do that. But guess what? We didn't even have to wait, right? Uh, Now, guess guess who's home all day long? The kids are. Guess who gets to spend a lot more time with them? Parents. That's awesome. That's great. That's something that we've been hoping for, that we've been waiting for, uh, that we're going to encourage today and forward. Parents spending more time with their kids, uh, maybe going through their religion lesson that has been sent home. Uh, Maybe you're watching this right now together with your children. Uh, This is good. This is a very, very good thing. And perhaps the thing that that has come about 
uh, as a result of the changes that we're experiencing right now. Um, how awesome is it that you as a parent can witness your child grow in faith during an incredibly unique time? Think about the stories that you can share. Uh, here at Zion, we have what I think is an awesome, awesome tradition of children sharing a statement of faith as they prepare to be confirmed. Start writing now, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, if you didn't get there, right? Uh, this, is, this is a story that you can share in your statement of faith. And remember a time where we were forced to stay home and it was crazy and we didn't know what was going on. Uh, but we spent time in the scriptures. We spent time in God's word. We spent time in prayer. We spent time uh, thinking and maturing in our faith. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But as we conclude today, there was one other unexpected change of course uh, that took place that revolves around a donkey. Um, that comes in the New Testament. And we just celebrated it a few weeks ago. Well, it's gee, a few weeks ago. It's probably a couple months ago now. Um, that's Palm Sunday. As a donkey carried precious cargo into Jerusalem. And little did they know that that donkey was carrying that precious cargo, much like Balaam's donkey was, towards death. But that donkey did not turn around. That donkey marched in with Jesus on his back, hearing shouts of Hosanna, hearing people welcome him in as king of the Jews. And that donkey kept marching, and Jesus kept marching, even into Calvary, even to the cross. What an unexpected turn for those around, right? One week you're shouting Hosanna and welcome to the king of the Jews. The next week you're shouting crucify him. What an unexpected turn change of course that went before uh, all of those people. And yet, because of that change of course, our sins are forgiven. Their sins are forgiven. Jesus went to the cross on our behalf. Jesus knew what he was doing the whole time, right? Jesus had told his disciples before. Uh, Jesus has come before God and, and knew the cup that he was to bear. And he did it. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. Your sins are forgiven. And I can't wait to see you all and declare those words before you on Sunday at 745 and 930 as we gather together on Mother's Day nonetheless, right? On Mother's Day uh, to worship God, to give thanks to him for sending his son Jesus for going to the cross on our behalf. Hope to see you all soon. Blessings to you all, uh, and stay safe, and hope to see you Sunday.